Good morning, church. I think this is Jennifer's favorite shirt, but I went ahead and covered it up anyway. Hey, I wanted to take you to one of the most famous passages of the Last Supper. This is Jesus talking to his disciples the night before he's crucified. And he says this in John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. Jesus says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. There it is. Jesus says, love one another, love one another, love one another. Three times in two little verses. He also says it's a new command. There have been many times when I've talked about the significance of this particular command and what makes it new as opposed to any of the previous times we were told to love people. Uh, there are all kinds of things that we could focus on with regard to this particular command. But what I want to do is I want to just acknowledge two things. One, this command definitely indicates that people who are part of the family of God should love each other with a love that is surpassing other sorts of loves. Jesus is saying this immediately after he has washed the disciples' feet, immediately after he has made the point that he is sacrificing his life for them, and immediately before he goes to the cross. This is Jesus saying, as I've loved you, it's obvious that sacrificial love is what he's talking about. It's also obvious he's talking to his disciples. He says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. The people who love one another the way Jesus loved them are the people who are his true followers. In other words, Jesus is saying that we're supposed to have a special kind of love for the family of believers. Now, Here's my question for us today. What does this look like when we don't get to gather together in the same room? You see, on Sunday mornings, we can fool ourselves into thinking that we're a loving church. We can fool ourselves into thinking that we're a loving family because what we do is we get together and we smile at each other and we say, how are you doing? And, and maybe on a normal Sunday, we'd shake someone's hand or give them a hug. And you know, we, we have this friendliness and, and we meet the new people and we say, oh, how are you doing? It's so good to have you here. And then we have this inspiring, hopefully exciting service together this time of worship. And, and we, we feel positive, we feel encouraged. And, and then we leave the place thinking, oh, we're such a loving family. Sometimes we can feel loving when we show up at someone's house for like a core group or something. And we get together for our little small group and, and we just feel like we're so loving. But when you're stuck in your home or when you're in coronavirus isolation time or when the governor says everybody shouldn't leave their house unless it's a, an essential operation, what does it mean to love one another? What does it mean for the church to love one another in an environment like this? Well, let me just acknowledge to you that all those other things that we do are not necessarily love. All those other things that we do are just ways that we pretend we love. Sure, sometimes I go over to someone's house because I love them. Sometimes I invite someone over to my house because I love them. Sometimes I do it because I feel like it's my obligation and if I don't do it, they won't think I love them. And I don't really love them, but I want them to think that I love them. And so I'll do this, this sort of thing. And churches do this all the time. What does authentic love look like? Well, I want to take a step backwards, even a little farther. And I want to ask you, what is the authentic you like? See, one of the problems with the coronavirus situation is that uh, we're out of our normal habits. We're out of our normal routines. And I've noticed on my Facebook feed and on a number of conversations that I've had with people that when I'm out of my normal routine, when I'm out of my normal habits, guess what happens? I complain. Uh, the people that I know who are complaining, they're saying things like, I, I think I might just go insane if I have to keep doing this uh, lockdown situation for much longer. Now, granted, there are some people who are spending far more time with their children than they have before. And granted, some of those people have children that really um, need to be calmed down somehow. The point is that there are lots of different circumstances for lots of different people, and you've got lots of different reasons for feeling the way you're feeling. But I want to encourage you to realize something. This is the moment when God, your Heavenly Father, 
has stripped away almost all of your ordinary habits, has stripped away almost all of your ordinary practices, has stripped away almost all of your ordinary busynesses. And he is asking you to rediscover what it means to be a follower of Jesus. There's this song that we sang a few weeks ago, one of the last times we actually had band members in the church building. We sang the song, uh, The Heart of Worship. It says, when the music fades and all is stripped away, and I simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. It's a song to God. And it says to God, God, when everything else is stripped away, can I still bring you something that's of worth? Friends, I want to encourage you that when the habits of love, when the habits of church, when the habits of worship, and when the habits of life get stripped away, who are you? What's left? What's left when everything else is stripped away and it's just you and your family and your church and your God? What's left? I want to encourage you that this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity that you, with your family and your friends and your church and your God, to rediscover what it means to be the person God has made you to be. Without all the habits, without all the things that surround it, this is your chance. This is your opportunity. So you might say, well, how do I do that? Well, I'll give you some tips. One, Spend time with God. Read his word. Spend some time in prayer. Get yourself some relaxing time in the quietness. If you're in a loud house with lots of people around you, go to the bathroom. Turn on the shower. No one's going to be bothering you in the shower. And if they try, you just tell them, hey, listen, leave me alone. I'm in the shower. But find some time for you to be private, personal, quiet, you and your God. And spend some time with your family. I mean, good time, real time. Pull out a board game, uh, find a favorite family movie, cuddle up under a blanket, get some good time together as a family. And if your kids are a little rambunctious, maybe now is the time for you to start doing a little bit of discipline to try to help get them in line. We'll talk about that some other time. But what about loving your church family? Listen, send an email. Pick up the phone and make an actual call. Do a FaceTime chat. Do something else, but, but just say to someone that you care about, that you care about them. And rediscover for yourself, or maybe for the first time, what it means to be you without all the habits and without all the things in your life that cause the busyness. Now I'll say one more thing. For me and my family, we are certainly more busy now than we have been recently. Uh, I'm doing more work for the church, even though it's digital. I'm doing more work for the church, investing more time. My wife is doing more work, investing more time in her business because lots of things are in upheaval right now. Even my kids are doing more work. Lots of us are in some ways busier than ever before. But that doesn't change this. Jesus says, by this will everyone know that you're my disciples if you love one another. As far as God is concerned, life is pretty simple. Find a way to love him. Find a way to love one another. And let that become the core of who you are. And let everything else just be the busyness, but not you. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would give us during these periods of isolation, quarantine, lockdown, whatever it is, that you would give us sabbatical, holy space to be present with you, to be truly present with the others who are in our lives physically still, but to be present as much as we possibly can technologically with those in our lives who are not physically present with us now. God, help us in this time when all the habits and other things are stripped away, to simply come and to be people who love you, who love one another, and who do it well. And Lord, we trust you to give us the wisdom in the midst of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Find a way to love someone today.
God bless you.